Tonight, as gang rivalry threatens Indianapolis neighborhoods, former gang members warn parents, we'll take you to the face-to-face. -face. And face-to-face, -face, Democrats and Republicans blow hot air, steam, and rhetoric. But they still don't have a budget, and now voters are getting steamed. Next on the News Center Tonight. Live from the heart of Indiana, Tom Cochran, Ann Ryder, Bob Gregory's exclusive AccuWeather, Don Hines Sports Final, and Ronnie Duncan Sports Spotlight. This is News Center 13 tonight. The news starts now. Their popularity is increasing, and so is the violence. The number of active street gangs in Indianapolis now numbers 48. Tonight, parents and some former gang members are fighting back through education. The News Center's Kevin Rader has more from the Indianapolis Far East Side. Around 60 concerned citizens went back to school at Heather Hills Elementary to learn about gangs. Everything you see up here have been taken from our children on the streets. Can you imagine these things being carried into your school? That's where they came from, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. The problem has been around for 30 years, but the activity good. is but much more serious now. Last Friday's gang-related shooting of 13-year-old Shanique Carpenter underscores the point. Sergeant Moore says one father still cannot accept his son's involvement. Wouldn't he be just as loving a father if he made this young man take the responsibility for his actions? I think so. Former gang members also told parents there's no substitute for top love. A lot of parents don't understand freedom. That's a big word. Give your child too much freedom, going to take everything you can. Take away the freedom, can't do nothing. Too much freedom, you'd be free for the rest of your life, you'd be dead. Tony became involved with gangs at the age of five, a point that particularly bothered Cindy Johnson, who has a five-year-old at home. It really it scares me, and I want to know what to look for, and that's why I came, so I can know what to watch for in my son and also in the other children that come to my home. Now, parents may want to know the name of the group of former gang members who are now trying to make a difference. It is SOS, Sons Off the Street. Kevin, as parents, what is the most important thing we can do? What was stressed tonight on both sides, Tom, from gangs and from law enforcement, is that parents have to care enough to love their children enough to ask where they're going, for a phone number of where they're going. Just keep in touch, communicate always, keep that line open, and look on notebooks and the like as they come home from school for insignias and the like, to, and ask them about them if they're there. Simply be aware and keep the lines of communication open. That's it, Tom. All right, Kevin. Yeah. Well, the gang-related incident that stunned the city and put an eighth-grade girl on life support has an IPS bus driver in hiding tonight. She was driving the bus that was fired upon last week near John Marshall Jr. High by boys who police say were aspiring to gang membership. The bullet struck 12-year-old Shanique Carpenter in the head. The unintended victim is still fighting for life. The bus driver was and is so shaken she prefers to remain unidentified. My main concern was, I know that if they shot once, they could shoot again, and it was just get out of the area. And I just immediately just put my foot to the accelerator. The driver is on temporary medical leave. She says she knew the victim from another route she drove. IPS is planning counseling for drivers concerned about safety. The votes are in, and we should know tomorrow whether Indiana State Police and other law enforcement officers will opt to establish a state employee's union. It's the first time the collective bargaining issue has come before them. State police say they are paid less than their counterparts in surrounding states. Supporters of collective bargaining say it would bring more muscle to the negotiating table. It would need the approval of the Indiana legislature. Next week, 28,000 other state workers will vote on the collective bargaining issue and choose between two competing unions. More about money now. It is a familiar tune, but some Americans are beginning to tire of it. Negotiators from the White House and Congress say they could be close to a deal. The budget deadline is Sunday midnight, and a couple of Hoosier congressmen tonight are less than optimistic. But most of what I see as waste doesn't involve uh, taking traffic controllers off the job. As I say, it involves somebody who's making a pot of money with a government contract, and they're not touching them at all with this. We have an impasse right now. I believe there will be a compromise, but there's going to be some hard bargaining before we get this, uh, this finished. Automatic cuts in government service occur if there is no agreement. Produce merchants say you will suffer quality declines in price increases because of a cutback in the hours of duty of food inspectors. A lot of stuff only has three or four day shelf life. 
if we have to wait an extra two days by the time the inspector inspects it, okay, and gives us the okay, that product may have fully deteriorated. All, the only place that we can go is to the dumpster. And then to the dumpster or not, the bottom line is you and I will pay more. It looks like Operation Desert Shield will itself be shielded from mandatory budget cuts should they come, but the Pentagon says other programs could be cut by as much as a third. The exiled emir of Kuwait says Iraq's invasion of his homeland has jeopardized world stability. Speaking at the U.N., the leader thanked the diplomats for their support. In other developments, Jordan continues to allow passenger flights, saying the air embargo applies only to cargo. And Britain and Iran renew diplomatic ties, severed since 1989. Eh? Britain and Iran want to have normal diplomatic relations again. England's ambassador to the U.S. is in Indianapolis tonight. David McNally reports on a few reasons for the thaw in British-Iranian relations. The British ambassador would not say if the Iraq crisis is behind his government's moves for normal ties with Iran. Some analysts think the UN allies will need the Iranians in their corner if war breaks out with Iraq. We have been keen to improve relations with Iran, and um, I think I'd like to leave it at that for the moment. But he did say British domestic concerns are a key reason for normal ties with Iran. We look for their um, help over the freeing of the hostages in the Lebanon. There's a, there's a British citizen who's in jail in, in Tehran. And there's, of course, also the question of the um, attitude that the Iranian authorities take to Salman Rushdie. The British author has been marked for death by Iran since last year. Ayatollah Khomeini said his book, The Satanic Verses, slandered Islam. Even though the UN buildup against Saddam Hussein continues, Ackland does not think war is inevitable. Nothing is ruled out, but we are proceeding on the, in the hope and with the earnest desire to see a peaceful resolution of this problem and that we hope that the pressure on Iraq, on the government of Iraq, will produce the desired result. He says UN sanctions are putting the bite on Iraq, but he doesn't know if Saddam will follow through on threats to attack Israel and other targets. David McAnally, News Center 13 tonight. Still ahead on the News Center tonight, Souter sails through his first Senate test in his quest to make it to the high bar. And bar patrons in a college town run for their lives after a gunman holds them hostage. We'll have the story. Hi again, everyone. Interesting stuff tonight. A punter playing quarterback, word of the Dickerson decision, and women reporters in NFL locker rooms. Take a deep breath on this one, Reds fans. That's right, it's Eric on the turf, and I'll have a prognosis coming up in sports. Next on News Center 13 tonight. In September, stop drafts with true test weather all white acrylic latex caulk. Just 99 cents while supplies last at participating True Value Hardware Store. How do you make an El Grande burro special? If we made it any bigger, the waitress couldn't carry it. If we stuffed it with any more beef or chicken, it would explode. So we gave it some company. Our Mexican pizza appetizer and fabulous fried ice cream. And there you have it, an El Grande burro special with the one small touch. Recently, Four Wheel and Off-Road Magazine took this year's 4x4 of the Year winner and all the past winners and conducted a head-to-head -head showdown to determine the best of the best. So who won? Who do you think? There are a lot of 4x4s out there, but there's only one Jeep. Get 0% financing or 1,000 cash back on new Jeep Cherokees. hatred for women with blonde hair. 
That's how one hostage described a gunman who terrorized a college town bar. He was a 32-year-old Iranian who had apparently been rejected for a student loan before he went on his rampage in Berkeley. Police shot and killed the heavily armed man after he killed a student and held 30 bar patrons hostage for seven hours. For many of them, the ordeal ended with a daring escape through the bar's back door. Seven hostages were injured. A Philippine court has convicted 16 people of murdering President Corazon Aquino's husband seven years ago. The verdict in the three-and-a-half-year trial comes on the first anniversary of the death of Ferdinand Marcos, who many believe ordered the killing of Benigno Aquino. A feisty Neil Bush insisted there was no conflict in court today, no conflict of interest in his role as director of a failed savings and loan. The president's son is testifying in a federal hearing on such allegations against him. The Senate Judiciary Committee gave Supreme Court nominee David Souter a thumbs up, a passing grade. It voted in favor of his appointment. The full Senate gets the issue next week. And parents, here's a warning. You might want to get ready to stand in line. The new kids in the block are coming back for another performance. This time at Market Square Arena, tickets go on sale Monday. Mom and Dad, a Grandma or Grandpa, that is 8 o'clock Monday morning. The new kids show is slated for Wednesday, November 2nd. Well, some kids think the new kids present the greatest show on earth, but anyone who's seen the real thing at Market Square Arena this week knows it's the Three Ring Circus. Pat Carlini with that and more in her Indie Nightlife report. From the moment Barbra Streisand sang out in the Broadway show Funny Girl in 1964, a star was born. Funny Girl is the story of Fanny Bryce. It's been a hit for many years. Barbra Streisand won an Oscar for recreating the role for film. Funny Girl runs now beef and boards through November. Now, if you have a favorite comedy show or musical production that you've seen this year, or a favorite actor or actress that you'd like to see honored, you might want to check out the first annual Corbin Patrick Awards. The best of the best will be honored here Monday night at Beef and Boards. The other the and the circus is coming to town. The Ringbeam Brothers and Barnum Bailey Circus will be playing at Market Square Arena through the weekend. There's also Gunther's farewell tour with the circus, 20 years of performing. And Monday Night Football is back in full force. There's a variety of night spots and host football Mondays, but one spot where you can't miss that important play is the original sports bar in Union Station. Three big screens bring the action to life on Mondays. That's a look at Indie Night Life for this week. We'll see you next week. Pat Garlini, New Center, 13. And if that doesn't fit the bill, Bob's going to invite us all over for a picnic. Well, we better get some stuff to cook indoors here, maybe over the weekend time. We've got another fine autumn evening going on, though. Mostly clear skies over Indiana, as this satellite picture will illustrate for you now. Uh, just uh, nothing but uh, clouds off to our left or the northwest. I'll talk more about those in just a second. Under clear skies, 64 at the airport now, 69 downtown. Relative humidity stands at 81%, southeast wind at 6, and the pressure 30.06 and falling. Uh, back to that satellite picture underneath that little patch of white, northern Missouri. Take a look at what is going on. They hit 93 degrees in Kansas City today. They have a severe thunderstorm warning out for portions of northern Missouri. That stuff is sliding to the southeast and will move across Indiana, but not at that intensity. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. Have you ever heard of a squirrely dog? No. Okay. Well, we're going to show you a dog that's gone a little squirrely over motherhood. This really is a good story. So, folks, uh, you want to know how to win big in McDonald's, McMillions on NBC? Mm-hmm. You go for it. That's right. You got to go to McDonald's for a new McMillions ticket every day. Because every day, for 28 days, we're giving away a million bucks or more. Got to get one of these. Then, every night, you just pull up a seat, you get comfy, and watch NBC to see if you win. Now, if nobody wins one night, the cash rolls over until somebody wins. So come on, play McMillions on NBC. You could call one company to take your package to an address across town. And you could find somebody to take your package to any address cross country. Then you could call a third outfit that could take your package overseas. And yet another that could take your package overnight. But there's only one company you could call if you only wanted to make one call. Crime Stoppers. About 400 crime suspects so far know it works. More felony arrests each week thanks to Crime Stoppers. Be alert and be a Crime Stopper.
The Ford Motor Company official factory closeout sale is on now. This is it. Over 2,000 Fords, Lincolns, Mercury's, and Ford trucks are being liquidated to the public in the parking lot here at the Ford Motor Company factory on English Avenue at Shaylin. This is the biggest closeout sale ever held directly at the factory. It's the one place you'll be sure to save thousands on a new Ford or Lincoln Mercury product. The sale is on now from 10 a.m. till dark, but Saturday is the last day of this factory-authorized closeout sale at the Ford Motor Company factory. English Avenue at Shaylin's. Don't miss it. Hey, beautiful. If something amazing happens to you, isn't it great to be able to share it with a friend? Yes, and he'd call me beautiful right there on the street. Whether they're near or far, give them a call on GTE. Yes, and someday you just have to fight them all. Uh-huh. talk about tomorrow first thing get up and go weather here in the morning we're going to have plenty of sunshine out there uh, the uh, thermometer uh, about 62 degrees for you what's going on out there right now take a look at what uh, we have as far as temperatures are concerned we'll get one more day where highs in our area should be in the 80s now our normal this time of year is 74 so it's been bonus city so far but all of that is gradually going to end here's a closer look at what we will expect tomorrow and there'll be a few more clouds will come in from the west Generally, we'll go from the mid-80s to the mid-70s up in the northern part of the region. This is the map by 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Frontal system coming through the area, but still to our north, so we'll stay warm, and the greater likelihood of showers will be in the afternoon. Not have the intensity of that stuff you saw in Missouri tonight, but there may be a thunder shower as this thing moves to the northeast across the state tomorrow. Part of the story. Take a look at Saturday, then. The front pushes south, but then by 6 o'clock Saturday night, Look at this big rain shield back up through Missouri and then headed our way. Not out of the question there could be a sprinkle in the South Bend area for that Notre Dame-Purdue ball game on Saturday in the afternoon. Variably cloudy skies, though. Temperatures probably in the mid-60s. So that is the setup. Some rainy weather coming our way. Here's my AccuWeather forecast. Then. Overnight tonight, generally clear skies again, as we mentioned. Uh, we'll call it 62 at 8 in the morning. During the day tomorrow, we'll have a nice high of 82. There'll be a mixture of clouds and sunshine. And then a chance of that shower, maybe even a thunder shower, especially in the afternoon hours. Our winds will be out of the south-southwest from 5 to 10. And a stray thunder shower is not out of the question tomorrow night either. 57 will be the low. And then on Saturday, clouds, sunshine. Can't totally rule out a shower here, 74. A wee bit cooler. Still a chance of a shower for us on Sunday with a 68-degree high. And then we'll kind of dry it out for the first part of the uh, week. Talking about um, college football for the Colts on Sunday. Looks like 72 degrees. Should get the game in under some cloudy skies. It could be a shower maybe later in the afternoon in the Philadelphia area. So that's it. All right, Bob. All right, see you tomorrow. Some encouraging word tonight. What may be a breakthrough in the cosmetic side effects of chemotherapy is emerging from the Miami Jackson Hospital in Washington. Doctors discovered by chance that mixing certain experimental cancer drugs stopped hair loss in lab animals undergoing chemotherapy. Hair loss is one of the most difficult cosmetic side effects of chemotherapy. The drug Immuvert was the key in combination with at least two other common cancer drugs. When the News Center continues tonight, Don Hines joins us with the latest on the life and times of Eric Dickerson. Stay with us on News Center 13 tonight. We'll also show you a move toward a drug-free Indiana. Two great reasons to come to Highland Superstores by Saturday. One, the price on this 13-inch color TV is just $159. Two, the name on this TV is Z. Two more great reasons to come to Highland Superstores by Saturday. One, this Murata fax machine with automatic paper cutter is just $4.98. Two, you can impress your friends by telling them it costs a lot more. roads is they often come with bumps. The thing about the Infiniti Q45 performance luxury sedan is it comes with all the amenities. Lots of bumps, all the amenities. It's a bump of bump when you don't even feel it. Does cheddar make you melt? Swiss. Mm. Are you passionate for Parmesan? Mm. 
Arby's introduces the cheese lover's dream, our delicious new triple cheese melt, rich Swiss cheese, tangy cheddar cheese, and creamy Parmesan cheese sauce layered on lean, slow-roasted beef. Arby's new triple cheese melt. What do you say? I want you. We didn't see Scorsese or Bogdanovich, but the celebrities were there, and the cameras were, in fact, rolling. One. You're fed up. Fight back and join our team, Indiana. Former Colts player Matt Boozer, first lady Susan By, and lots of kids taped an anti-drug public service announcement at Butler University Stadium today. They're kicking off the I, I Am Fed Up campaign, which encourages Hoosiers to take an active role against drug and alcohol abuse. The Governor's Commission for a Drug-Free Indiana sponsors the campaign. They'll roll through the state in October. And speaking of Colts, could be some interesting doings on the field Sunday, huh? There could. We hope not. No, hope not mm -hmm. real interesting. You know that Jack Trudeau was started quarterback for the Colts Sunday at Philadelphia, and Jeff George is in the wings, but who is this taking snaps in earnest today? It's number three, in this case number four on the list, punter Ron Stark, who will know when to hand off. I don't kick on any of these plays, unfortunately. I got to hang on to the ball or give it to somebody. But it's, uh, it would, yeah, it would be tough, you know. The only thing I'd have going for me is if I'm in there, people obviously are not going to expect a lot, you know. I mean, I've played quarterback, let's see, about 13 years ago in high school. So, you know, virtually I have not, you know, seen anything. Back when Dowhire was here, I learned the offense, and things are a lot different than they were then. Thankfully, we did a one-on-one -on -one interview with Colts GM Jim Irsay today to be shown on Inside the Colts Huddle Sunday morning at 11. He did tell us that he expects a decision from the commissioner on the Dickerson case tomorrow or Saturday. Well, right now they did request yesterday a few additional things from us uh, just for their records, and, and we supplied them that today, so hopefully... Um, uh, possibly tomorrow we'll have a uh, ruling from uh, the league office. Commissioner must also rule on Pat's tight end, Zeke Mowat, accused of sexual harassment in the locker room. The only local female newspaper sports reporter is Joanne Lynch. Very high-profile job, too, with CBS, so she may have calculated her response. I don't know. <laughs> um, I've never experienced any discrimination um, from other reporters or from athletes. Uh, the most difficulty I have is in high school coverage because um, I won't go in a high school locker room. I, you know, there's, that's just one thing I won't do. I, I don't think that that's necessarily good. The kids aren't equipped to handle having a woman in the locker room. We'll discuss that too at 11 Sunday morning. Two magic numbers lowered and a division tie plus Greensburg's golden boy right after this. My territory is like a geography lesson. L.A., New York, Miami, London, Paris, Berlin. I live on TWA. I know all the flight numbers. I know the crew by their first names. We're old friends. The TWA network covers 150 cities worldwide, including 125 cities in the U.S. alone. Well, what do you expect? World is their middle name. Today's TWA. Find out how good we really are. Janice Turner, nine years ago, a single mother making only $9,000 a year. I looked into the future and knew that I had to raise three children on my own. That was before Janice and other state secretaries in Connecticut joined AFSCME and won the highest pay in the nation. Janice now makes over $27,000. I am now sending my son to college. Without AFSCME, none of this would have been possible. I wouldn't have been able to provide for my children the way I have. She's not kidding anyone. It bothers her that I shop for myself. And why not? I know what I want. Comfortable, great-looking clothes. Simple. Lazarus. No hype, just taste. Relaxing isn't just a t-shirt and jeans anymore. There's a choice now. Plus, it matters to me what I wear. I'm into a lot of things. Lazarus happens to be one I enjoy. Get into Lazarus. But don't tell her that. <laughs> Restaurant. We make pasta fresh every day. And for all the different kinds of pasta we serve, there are just as many wonderful ways for you to enjoy them. Fresh pasta at the Olive Garden, where all the best of Italy is yours. The Olive Garden is the proud sponsor of the Charity Cup Championship. 
All right, let's get right to the baseball here. Red fans probably still holding their breaths on this one. Eric Davis watching there and left, making the great catch, but gives the retaining wall an excellent whack. He got up and finished the game. Earlier, he made this excellent play on the throw to the plate. Actually, the play was made by Joe Oliver blocking the plate, and the runner, Justice, is out. If Eric has a fall that's striking out, really no problem, though. Glenn Braggs comes to the rescue in the sixth to put the Reds up 3-2. They win 4-2 as Rob Dibble strikes out the side of the ninth inning. And the Reds' magic number, courtesy Mr. Dibble, is two. Four, three consecutive nights, the Cubs have jumped in front of the Pirates. Andre Dawson, Comer in the first, two nothing. But the game was won on a Sid Bream lollipop in the sixth. Three, two Pirates, their magic number is now four. Ron, definitely the Mets darling tonight, shutting out Montreal, six nothing. Here's the play of the game. Montreal's Larry Walker with the hit. Watch the line of DeShields, though, a bit unsure coming in. And then he makes his second mistake on the Daryl Boston throw. He fails to slide. He is out. Six zip Mets. They are three back. And the Red Sox and Jays tied for first in the East. 3-2 Boston win from Detroit. Leaders three games set this weekend in Boston. And Ronnie takes you to Greensburg. Everyone knows Greg Hawk in Greensburg. And when he fights, it seems like everyone in Greensburg is in his corner. And when he wins... This town goes crazy. Craig Hauk is also known as the Golden Boy. When he's in the ring, they say he's standing for the Tower Tree here in Greensburg. I just feel like I'm representing the town and I'm standing up and we don't want the tree to go down and neither do I. Hauk is like some kind of a folk hero in this community. You see, his fans are known as Hawkamaniacs. And whether he's at work busting tables or around town just talking to friends, Craig Hauk is the darling of Greensburg and they love him. Great. Great. I think he's great. <laughs> I guess that's what uh, also brings uh, all of his fans behind him from Greensburg. That's the main reason why we stick behind him. He's just kind of a hometown boy for us. Ronnie Duncan, New Center 13 Sports. See you tomorrow. Thank oh. you, Don. Finally, what sounds like the plot of a Disney movie, but it's real. Two natural enemies in any backyard adopt one another. The story begins with Queenie, the Valley's family dog in Sanger, California. Queenie's puppy died soon after birth, and her Sprocket, the orphaned baby squirrel who changes Queenie's mope to hope. Sprocket gets plenty of mother's milk and attention. Queenie gets to be a mother after all. Karen Valleys is afraid she may be stuck with the squirrel for life. Isn't that amazing? That is a sweet story to yeah. send you to bed on. Friday morning is almost here. Thank you very much for looking in on this Thursday night. Join the Sunrise team tomorrow at 6 in the morning. We'll be back here at 5 tomorrow evening. Have a good night.